the background for my talk on this aspect of my longitudinal research uh, involving 20 years of studying the same patients involves several important questions. One, do all patients with schizophrenia need to be treated with antipsychotics continuously throughout their lives? And two, does the long-term long multi-year use of antipsychotics for patients with schizophrenia reduce or eliminate psychosis? These issues have not been investigated on a longitudinal basis. Luke who was sort of the expert on summaries of the literature in this area, noted that, quote, nothing is known about the effects of antipsychotic drugs compared to placebo after three years. In other words, for the first two or three years it's been studied intensively, it has not been studied uh, after, after a three-year period. In contrast to Luke's comments, in the World Psychiatric Association section on psychopharmacopsychiatry, or pharmacopsychiatry, it was noted that, quote, antipsychotic treatment has a significant effect on the long-term course of schizophrenic illness and can f significantly facilitate recovery. Studying multiple follow-ups over 20 years, I will try to focus on psychosis, recovery, relapse, work functioning, rehospitalization, and potential improvement over time in severity of psychosis. Okay, this is a picture of the, at least the first 20 years of our study. We started studying patients at index hospitalization, that's on the left hand side, and we f at first followed them up every two years, then two and a half years, and then every five years. And these are the same patients over time. Uh, and the, the follow-ups usually involved a three and a half hour interview, uh, a series of cognitive tests, uh, and various other questionnaires, and various other uh, just a variety of different instruments. Okay, this is a picture of the, uh, of the uh, uh, people I'll be talking about today. It involves 139 patients, uh, 70 with schizophrenia spectrum disorders, and uh, uh, the, at 69 with psychotic mood disorder patients. Uh, they were all psychotic at initial hospitalization, all received neuroleptic treatment at some point during the hospitalization, usually completely through the hospitalization. Okay, the me we caught them young. The median age uh, at index hospitalization was 23 years. Uh, about half of them were first admission, and most of the rest uh, it was a second admission, but they were caught quite young. Uh, and on the right-hand side, I have two very important subgroups. The total sample is an important one, but on the right-hand side, we have two important subgroups that are, that are fairly unique, especially one of the two uh, groups. Namely, uh, 15 of them were patients who left their antipsychotic medications shortly after hospitalization or, or, or immediately after le leaving the hospitalization. In other words, by the time we started studying them at the two-year follow-up, they had been off medications for at least a year. Uh, and these 15, uh, other than periods when they were back in the hospital, and that was only occasionally for them, for most of them, uh, for these 15 uh, were off it for 20 years. We're not on antipsychotic medications for 20 years. Uh, now, the other group were 25 who were on it continuously for, uh, for the 20 years. And we also have a third group of about 24, 25 patients who were on it and off it and on it and off it. Uh, but these two, some of the slides will 
will compare the two groups, uh, those on it continuously and those not on it continuously. Okay. Uh, now, the fantasy is that everyone's on it, that all schizophrenia patients are on it. It just ain't true. Uh, what happens is uh, a number of patients leave treatment, but in addition, there are other subgroups as well, a few who are, uh, who are in treatment but not on any medication, a few uh, who are on other medications but not on antipsychotics. But the main groups are, the, are those who leave treatment completely, and there are a number of them, and those who stay in uh, treatment and stay on antipsychotics. And you can see, usually in our sample, about 55 to 60 percent, sometimes a little more, were on antipsychotics, but not everyone. So double-blind studies are not including everyone. At least, yeah, they're not including everyone. Okay, uh, we have some su a surprise, namely multiple aspects of our data indicate that longitudinally schizophrenia patients or antipsychotics for prolonged periods are functioning significantly better. Uh, the data indicate that some of that significantly better is because they're, in a sense, more resilient uh, and better prognostic patients. Not all of it is that, as I'll show in some slides. Uh, the data indicate that after the first two years, antipsychotics do our data indicates that after the first two years, antipsychotics do not diminish psychosis. Uh, uh, even when controlling for psychosis, schizophrenia patients prescribed antipsychotics had poorer work functioning, significantly poorer work functioning. Uh, what factors are involved here? There are probably eight or nine factors, but two of them clearly are the subsample of schizophrenia patients who have left treatment are not included in double-blind drug placebo studies. Uh, you can't get them in for it. If they, if they left treatment, they're certainly not going to come in to, uh, uh, to, to, in effect, enter into a new uh, treatment scheme. Uh, furthermore, double-blind studies of schizophrenia patients previously in treatment for over a year could might well be considered withdrawal studies, uh, namely the way you do a, a classic, an ideal double-blind study, which is rarely done, is you have two groups of patients who are naive. Uh, again, antipsychotics do a number of things, not one thing, but one of the things is that they're partial dopamine blockers. And, uh, 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 if the, uh, in the ideal study, you would have people who have not had dopamine blockers in the past put on placebo and see how they done, how they do. But in fact, what we do in our double-blind studies, or the great majority, other than with acute patients, is we take people who have already been on a dopamine blocker for one, two, three, or four years. We take them off for two to four weeks, and then we give them placebo, and it's really a withdrawal study. You're withdrawing them from the, uh, from the dopamine blockers, which they've been on for one, two, three, or four years. For those, and I'll show a slide later on, who, who have been doing well for a while, you put them on a placebo, and they don't relapse. So these are two of the reasons. There are probably a number of other reasons as well. But in some ways, double-blind studies are withdrawal studies. And uh, there are a lot of medications that one can take for life, and there are no harmful effects and even positive effects. There are other medications one can take for a year or two, and then the head or the body accommodates to them, makes readjust to them, and uh, and uh, 
they become bad for the, pa for the patient or they no longer have their original effects. And there are others that even after a year or two are beginning to have harmful effects. Uh, and schizophrenia patients and other patients who are on uh, antipsychotics vary. Uh, for some of them, it may be that they are helpful for life or not. I don't know. We haven't, we haven't tested them for life. Uh, okay. Uh, this is a comparison, okay, of psychosis in our medicated and unmedicated schizophrenia patients. Uh, the, at the two-year follow-up, and our results are fairly consistent, at the two-year, our first follow-up was a two-year follow-up. We studied them intensively as, when they were acute patients in the hospital. At the two-year follow-up, there was no significant difference between those on antipsychotics and those not on antipsychotics. And the results in most areas are fairly consistent on that. However, after the two-year follow-up, we began to find that those not on antipsychotics were doing crashingly better, uh, namely at the four and a half, the 10, the 15, and the 20. There are one or two follow-ups I left out of this diagram in order to get more in it. Uh, okay, uh, but the, red, the reds are people with psychotic activity, and the people with on antipsychotics were much more psychotic. Now, part of that is because as a group, they were, not all of them, but they, in general, were better prognostic patients. They had signs that indicated that they might do better, and that was part of it, and part of it was because they were people as a group, not all of them, though, with uh, better pre-morbid developmental achievements. Uh, not all of it, though, and I'll show you because we controlled for that also. Okay, uh, this is a slide only of those two subsamples, those always prescribed antipsychotics and those not prescribed psychiatric medications at any assessment. And at the two-year follow-up, you could see there's little difference between them, and by the four and a half right up to the 20-year follow-up, the differences were all significant, and they were not significant differences that just made it, they were large significant differences. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, here we're, we're using controls. I said that the ones, the ones who were not on antipsychotics were in general better prognostic patients, but they weren't all better prognostic patients. So what we did is the two right-hand columns are those who were poor prognostic patients in, in the group off medications and in the group on medications. And in other words, we compared the poor prognostic patients in each group and we compared the good prognostic patients in each group. And in both cases, uh, there were large, significant differences in the percent who was psychotic. This, is, this we took at the 15-year follow-up. Uh, and not only that, once you start dividing them into little subgroups, you, you have less power to, to find significant differences, simply because you have smaller and smaller samples. Even so, both the, right, the two on the right hand and the two columns on the left hand uh, sh showed significant differences uh, in terms of those not on antipsychotics to uh, having, having less psychotic activity at the 15-year follow-up. At the 20-year follow-up, there were some significant differences and some weren't significant, but they were always in the same direction. Okay. Uh, in the last one, we control for prognostic factors. In this slide, we control for premorbid developmental achievements. People with premorbid developmental achievements do better uh, in, in our sample, in life in general, and even at Yale. Uh, 
I, I, I didn't make it up. It's true. Okay. Although we haven't studied I, I was here for 11 years, but we, we should have studied that, but we didn't. Okay. At any rate, uh, the two right-hand columns describe those with poor developmental achievements. Uh, and again, there, there was more psychosis, a lot more, significantly more, in those uh, with, uh, 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 who were, uh, th those prescribed antipsychotics had much more psychotic activity. Similarly, in the two left-hand columns, those who had good development, pre-morbid developmental achievements, they, the, uh, the, the, there were large significant differences, again, in favor of those not on empty psychotics. Now, but again, th th that was at the 15-year follow-up. At the two-year follow-up, there were no significant differences. It was only over time that the significant differences began to appear. Okay. Uh, this, uh, th this describes the results at the 20-year follow-up. I showed you results on antipsychotic, on um, psychosis. Now we're showing you results on rehospitalization. And again, th those prescribed antipsychotics at follow-up uh, had significantly, after the two-year follow-up, at the two-year follow-up, there were no significant differences. Starting at the four-and-a-half-year follow-up, the Go, those on antipsychotics were significantly more likely, uh, I'm sorry, those prescribed antipsychotics, some of them were probably taking their antipsychotic medications, some may not have been. Uh, uh, adherence to one's schedule, doing what the doc, by the way, women are better at doing what the doctor tells them to do than men. Uh, and that's probably, that's probably not a genetic thing. That's probably because they've been trained as little girls uh, to do what the doctor tells you. Men are, not as, men are not as good at following instructions. Okay. Uh, we need to make sure we talk into the microphone. Oh, sure. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, this shows data on rehospitalization again. Starting at the four and a half year follow up, the, there, were, uh, there were large significant differences in the rate of rehospitalization uh, in favor of those not on antipsychotics. Okay, this looks at the issue of considering psychosis as an, uh, the problem with, when we compare, let's say, schizophrenia patients to mood disordered patients. In general, either one, either type of patient can do well or poorly, but there are some who are more liable uh, to psychotic activity. And in general, the, uh, the schizophrenia patients are more vulnerable to, to psychotic activity. That doesn't mean they will be psychotic all the time or even some of the time. It just means they have a vulnerability which may never be expressed or may be expressed. Uh, okay, this is uh, uh, comparing them, those who, oh, who at four, with all of these patients, we, we did either, we got them at five, or studied them at five follow-ups or six follow-ups. And this is those who had at least at four of the follow-ups had some psychotic activity during the year. And again, the, is divided into those always prescribed antipsychotics, sometimes, and those never on antipsychotics. And again, those always prescribed antipsychotics, uh, the great majority of them had, at four of the five or six follow-ups, they had psycho some psychotic activity. Uh, okay, we also compared them on other areas. One of the important areas that people make a, a big deal about, and appropriately so, is who's working and who isn't. Uh, and uh, again, at the two-year follow-up, the differences were the narrowest. Starting after the two-year follow-up, those uh, this the criterion was working half time or more. Uh, some of these patients were working half time, some three-quarter time, some all the time. 
some were working half of the year full time, we would consider that half time in effect. Uh, and what we again found is smaller differences at the two year follow up and starting at the four and a half year follow up, large significant differences. The surprising thing was that we found a very high percentage of those who were off antipsychotics were eventually working. A very high percentage. It surprised us. Okay. Uh, again, we compared. Oh, okay. One of the, there are a lot of different things. There are twenty or thirty things that can interfere with uh, with work functioning. Uh, one of them is cognition. Those with poorer cognition or who have cognitive impairment are less likely to be working. Uh, they, but there are a lot of other things. Uh, at one point, people were running around saying cognition determines it all. That just is not true. Our data has never shown that. It's shown that a lot of different things affect work functioning. Two of them are psychosis and negative symptoms. So this slide controls for, uh, for namely, for positive symptoms. It, uh, uh, it, okay, uh, and yeah, it, it, the two on the right hand side uh, were those patients who were not psychotic. In other words, many of the, who were not psychotic at that follow up. In other words, many of the, uh, uh, of the patients uh, were, uh, were not psychotic. So we only took those, and psychosis can interfere with work functioning. So for the two right-hand columns, we only comp we compared those who were not psychotic, who were being prescribed antipsychotics, and those who weren't be being prescribed it. And again, we found a significantly higher percentage of those uh, who were not on antipsychotics and not psychotic were working as compared to the ones who were on antipsychotics and not psychotic. And the left-hand side, we have those who were psychotic and uh, how many of them were working. And again, those not prescribed antipsychotics were more likely to be working. Okay, the other thing we, we compared them to is those, on, those who had negative symptoms. Now, negative symptoms, there are various kinds of negative symptoms, but one kind that's tricky and hardest to measure, unfortunately, is a, a lack of drive, a lack of push. Uh, in other words, many of us show up at work even when we're tired, even when, uh, uh, when things are going wrong and so forth, and uh, and those can drastically interfere with work functioning, those kinds of things. Uh, uh, when I got to, when I, I was at Yale for many years, when I got to Yale, I had been a leader in another area, and once I started working late at night, doing research and seeing patients and so forth, my, my, my ratings in the other area started to slip. So whereas once I was a leading person in New England in another area, uh, once I was at Yale, my rating gradually started to slip. Okay, uh, on the right-hand side, uh, uh, and I tried hard, it just wasn't the same. Uh, Yale was my demise in a way, <laughs> you know. So, uh, true, uh, okay. Uh, on the right-hand side, uh, those who, uh, who didn't, only those who didn't have negative symptoms and those prescribed antipsychotics were doing more poorly than those who, who, were, who were not prescribed antipsychotics. And again, on the left-hand side, the left-hand two columns, uh, those who were prescribed antipsychotics and had negative symptoms were doing more poorly in the work area than, than those who, uh, who, had, who, had who, who were not prescribed antipsychotics. Okay. Uh, okay, this slide is a little hard to understand. I'll try to explain it, I'm not sure. We'll see. Okay, 
uh, how protective are they against relapse antipsychotics? Now, what we're taking here is those we have uh, those people. We only took people who were not psychotic at a follow-up and compared them at the next follow-up. And those who were not on antipsychotics, who were not psychotic at a follow-up, almost none of them had a subsequent uh, psychi psychotic episode uh, in the interim uh, between the two and four and a half year follow-up. Uh, and those who those who were not psychotic and on antipsychotics, a lot of them also uh, uh, were not psychotic at the next follow-up, but more of them were psychotic at the next follow-up than those who hadn't been in it, on antipsychotics. So at least for people who were doing well, uh, being on antipsychotics was not helpful. Uh, And similarly, for when you move for, from those not psychotic uh, uh, and at the seven and a half year follow up, they would, again, those not prescribed antipsychotics did better at the, would, mo, m, m, none of them were psychotic at the next follow up, at the 10 year follow up. And uh, similarly, they were doing better when we moved from the 15 year to the 20 year follow ups. Uh, okay, and this again, this slide compares those who were who were continually rehospitalized, namely at during the the five to six years that we followed them up. It's at over a twenty year period, but during the five or six years that we examined more closely, uh, those who were always prescribed antipsychotics were more likely to to have a number of rehospitalizations. Okay, now we also measured, quote, recovery. Recovery is a tricky variable. Right, I've, I've never had serious illnesses for the most part, uh, uh, other than a passion for research. Uh, but, <laughs> but, and they're still trying to cure me of that. Uh, they haven't made it yet. Okay, uh, the recovery involves a number of different uh, things. In order to be, for us to classify a patient as recovered, it's not recovery for a lifetime. I don't know what my future lifetime will be like. Uh, I don't know what other people's future lifetime will be like. I can measure what's happened in the past. So uh, recovery involves a year with no positive or negative symptoms, uh, working at least half time, uh, not being hospitalized or rehospitalized, and uh, and uh, and at least some social contacts. Now, social contacts is a tricky variable to measure. Uh, uh, I go out with my wife a lot. Is that a social contact or is that a forced one? Well, it isn't forced. <laughs> she claimed you better go out with me. <laughs> you know. But at any rate, uh, uh, the, the, so the other thing being that recovery does, can be for a year, can be for five years, can be for 20 years, or can be for a lifetime. We don't know which it'll be. But uh, we did measure recovery and Again, the, at the two, again, at the two-year follow-up, there was no significant difference starting at the four-and-a-half-year follow-up. There were large significant differences. Okay. Uh, oh, this is comparing. This is not comparing antipsychotics. It's just comparing the vulnerability to not working of schizophrenia patients who were psychotic at the acute phase and mood disordered patients who were psychotic at the acute phase. Remember, most, it, it involves 31 of our 69 uh, mood disordered patients, 31 were unipolar uh, depressives who were psychotic, and 
38 were bipolar, uh, bipolar mood disorder patients who were psychotic at the acute phase. Remember, most unipolar patients who are depressed, first of all, at least half of them never see any treatment, uh, never come for treatment, and even most of the rest of them, even if they're hospitalized, most of them are not psychotic. So these are the worst, in effect, of the, uh, of the mood disordered patients, and still they have, uh, they're more likely to be working after than the schizophrenia patients. And finally, this compares uh, those on anti, the, those mood disordered patients with each other, those who are on antipsychotics and those who are on other meds and those who are on no meds. And again, we had actually about, about 18 years ago, we had a series of papers showing that lithium, which originally came out as one of the great, it cured all bipolar patients that we thought. Uh, and this is when I, we were at Yale, we started a lithium clinic and so forth. Uh, it's no longer used as the, it's, but it's used by some, and it's not terrible, but we never found huge results in favor of those on lithium versus those not on lithium. But this again shows those on antipsychotics uh, uh, were less likely to be working than those not on antipsychotics. Now again, I'm going to go to a few conclusions, but basically it, it, if one is on antipsychotics, it's not easy to come off them. There are, they, there's a high percentage of people who when they try to come off them, uh, they, they relapse. Uh, once they're off them for a, a while, it's, it's much safer. But I'm just saying, it's not easy to come off antipsychotics. Uh, there are all sorts of problems in that. Anyway, our longitudinal data indicate that one, not all schizophrenia patients need long-term antipsychotic treatment. Two, and data on psychosis indicated that multi-year antipsychotic treatment does not eliminate psychosis. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, our long-term uh, data uh, indicate that multi-year antipsychotic treatment does not eliminate psychosis for most schizophrenia patients. None of the 25 schizophrenia patients prescribed antipsychotics continuously throughout the 20 years were completely psychosis-free throughout the 20 years. A number of schizophrenia patients who had left long-term treatment experienced periods of recovery. We have about 45% uh, of unselected schizophrenia patients uh, had at least one period of recovery. And finally, the 20-year data for the schizophrenia patients continuously prescribed antipsychotics did not show improvement uh, in terms of less or milder psychosis at the 15-year and 20-year assessments than at the two, than at the two and four and a half year assessments. In other words, one would hope that if one was on antipsychotics, that sure you were psychotic at the two year follow-up, but 15 years later, even if you're still psychotic, it'll be a milder psychosis. We, we, did, we, we did make ratings on that at, at the time of each follow-up and uh, uh, carefully checked them and rechecked them. And at the 15 and 20 year follow-ups, those who had been psychotic at the two year follow-up were had about the same intensity. It, it didn't get worse, but it didn't get better. Okay, in view of the high percent of schizophrenia patients with psychotic symptoms at most of the 20 years of follow-ups, our data suggests that continuous post-hospital antipsychotic treatment does not reduce the number of schizophrenia patients with psychotic activity. Uh, Okay, finally, and this is the most important slide to me, I intend to continue this research. Thank you.